He was the youngest of the four, only 18 years old, and described by those who knew him as a gentle giant. Therefore he was possibly the least worldly wise, and he was also on his own in a strange city and a long way from home. He might not have realized he was in danger of being framed as a patsy, believed all the chaos around that part of London was just part of the mock terrorism exercise that he was part of, and so just continued with his assigned role, which was to board a certain double-decker bus at an appointed time and sit at the back of the top deck. A double-decker upon which a large advertisement for a play had been placed on one side, reading, Outright Terror, Bold and Brilliant. Please think about that sign on the side of the bus and the sick minds of the people who planned the attacks. Now this is where it gets weird because we are told that Hasib Hussain started from King's Cross Thameslink station and was seen on a number 91 bus travelling west along Euston Road to Euston station where he caught the number 30 bus that would have then travelled east, back along Euston Road, retracing his steps, back to where he started from at King's Cross, if it had not been diverted into Tavistock Square. Why would someone carrying a large heavy backpack do that, unless he was following a script, written by someone who knew in advance that that particular number 30 bus registration LX03BUF would be diverted into Tavistock Square and that Hasib Hussain would therefore not be able to get on it at King's Cross Thameslink which is where he had arrived at on the train from Luton. Only someone who is a stranger to London would do that without asking why because it is a totally illogical thing to do for someone who knows London and knows that the number 30 bus goes past King's Cross Thameslink station so that they could have caught it there instead. It would have been a complete waste of time, energy, money and an unnecessary risk to take and thus a totally illogical thing for a real terrorist to do. It now gets unbelievably weird because the number 91 bus that Hasib Hussain is reported to have taken from King's Cross along Euston Road to Euston Station to board the number 30 bus registration LX03BUF that got diverted into Tavistock Square actually goes to Tavistock Square. So if he wanted to get to Tavistock Square he could just have stayed on the number 91 bus and been sure of getting directly to Tavistock Square. The number 91 bus route goes from King's Cross to Tavistock Square. That is conclusive proof that that particular number 30 bus registration LX03BUF was part of Peter Power and his customers mock terrorist drill pre-rigged with explosives like the three tube trains and was pre-planned to be diverted into and blown up in Tavistock Square rather than blown up by a backpack bomb. Whoever planned this obviously planned to kill Hasib Hussain with that bus explosion so he could not tell anyone what had happened just as they had planned to kill the other three Muslim actors with the explosions on the three tube trains. At 0900 a.m. a number 30 bus registration LX03BUF left Marble Arch on its return journey to Hackney Wick. It arrived at Euston bus station at 0935 a.m. and was then diverted from its normal route into Tavistock Square and stopped outside the medical offices of the BMA where it was blown up 
at 09.47 a.m. as part of the terrorist exercise gone live. This also fits with the BBC Panorama Mock Terrorist Program of May 2004 where the explosion of a road vehicle was scheduled to take place after the three tube train explosions. A white van from a demolition company called Kingstar is seen and photographed parked at the side of the bus immediately after the explosion and a mysterious witness, Richard Jones, gives an account of what he says happened to the bus on camera which is something that normally would not be allowed by the police unless it was part of a film training exercise. Then, after a spate of very contradictory TV and newspaper interviews, within a very short space of time, that make sure everyone now believes the explosion was caused by a suicide bomber on the bus, Richard Jones disappears from view. However, and of particular interest, some newspapers, including the UK's Sunday Mail on the 10th of July 2005, reported that Richard Jones served an apprenticeship at an explosives factory in Ayrshire. Richard Jones' statements about the suicide bomber are very suspicious for two reasons. First, because they are so inconsistent and contradictory that they are not believable. And second, because criminals usually accuse someone else to divert attention away from themselves. Is that what Richard Jones did? He says that he and 11 other people got off the bus just before it exploded. Were the 12 of them a team with the other 11 there to cover up what Richard Jones was doing as he planted a bomb? Another strange statement he made to the Sun newspaper, reported in the 8th of July 2005 edition, is that he got off the bus because he had reached his destination. How could he possibly have reached his destination on a bus that had been diverted from its normal route unless he was part of the mock terrorism exercise team and got off the bus as planned in Tavistock Square after planting a bomb just before it was detonated. Does he work for Kingstar? Kingstar, whose white van was parked next to the bus, is a company that specializes in controlled demolitions, and Richard Jones said he served an apprenticeship at an explosives factory in Ayrshire. Was the Kingstar van there as part of Peter Power and his customers' training mock terrorism drill? to supervise the mock explosion that became real?